Hey guys, I'm Emily Powers, and today we're going to be painting a bird's nest in like a tree, knot hole, whatever, some kind of hole in a tree. I don't know exactly what <laughs> the real name for it is, but um, there's going to be a little egg in it. Um, I think it's like a robin's egg, and I'm going to be doing it step by step in acrylics so that you can see exactly how I do it. Uh, the paints and brushes the size canvas I'm using, all that will be in the description, so um, right under the video there should be a little arrow. If you hit it, it'll drop down all the supplies. So, I'm just going to start. Um, I already kind of drew it out a little bit. So I'm using a scribe all, white scribe all pencil. It's water soluble, so any like anything that will rub off, like chalk, or um, watercolor pencil, anything that'll come up with water um, is better to use than like graphite pencil because then you can just take like a damp rag or a towel and wipe off anything you don't want. So um, the knot hole and everything doesn't have to be exactly like mine because I'm sure every tree this type of hole is going to be a little different. But if this is the middle, then I drew the edge of the knot hole like right there and it's kind of like some stuff covering it up so even what I draw it may not turn out exactly like that. And it'll come down pretty close to the bottom and then if that's the middle and this is the fourth then it'll I put it just a little bit past the fourth and cut it off both sides up and it's almost like the third where I kind of cut off. So it doesn't have to be exact. If yours is a little more this way, a little more out, it, it's okay. It'll still look like a tree. So then if you mark the middle that way, then the where the hole is and where the nest is going to start is going to be like a little bit below that. And then this hole is kind of almost like an egg shape. I mean, it's a little, the outside edges are a little weird since it is wood, but it's kind of like an egg. Like, you can kind of see it looks kind of like an egg, which is kind of interesting. But um, it comes, um, if you split it in fourths, it'll come a little bit higher than the fourth, just a little bit. And it's kind of, slanted. It's not um, like right here. It's not perfect in the middle. It's almost like an egg that's kind of tilted a little bit. And the nest is just, it's kind of tilted too. So I'm just going to do like a little circle around right there. And then do like a little uh, uh, shape there with the little circle for the egg and I probably won't even uh, probably cover up that egg there but for the moment I just put that in there so it's it's pretty easy and if you your nest or anything is a little different it's it's not gonna matter that much it's gonna look pretty much like a tree with a nest in it no matter how you do it so I've got my half inch filbert and I wet it, I dipped it in my water, and tapped it off my rag to get it moist. And I got ultramarine blue and burnt umber, and it makes like a dark gray. And, I, oh, I didn't say that I already coated the canvas with burnt umber. I just took a damp sponge and kind of smeared it on. You, it just kind of helps because then I don't have to cover as much um, with details with a brush. You can just brush on all one cut, coat and then you won't see any of the canvas. But you could use a brush or anything to just quickly coat it. And with this gray mixture here, I'm going to have one half and I'm going to do more brown. 
So here's the brown side. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I can visually see this side's more blue. So you could do it just like half and half and do the whole thing half and half. But if you do like certain parts bluer and certain parts more brown, it just kind of, I don't know. It, I'm, I'm seeing certain parts look a little more blue and a little more brown. So that's just what I decided to do. But you could just do it half and half all the way around if you wanted to. So on this side, I'm going to do it more blue in this area. And I'm kind of going in, um, it's going to be very circular motion here, and it's going to be slightly curved on the outside, um, but not quite as much. So just kind of like if this is the center point, then just kind of make all your brush strokes kind of go in that direction. And if some of the brown shows through, it's okay. That's why we did that coat so that you wouldn't see any of the white canvas. If you see anything, you want it to be like a brown or something. So I'm going to go right around to that ring there. I'm going to get a little bit of brown when I get to the rim, just so it'll change colors and I can kind of see where that is. Just do something that'll let you know where that edge was. So if you're new to my channel, um, welcome, hit the uh, like button if you like the video, and um, subscribe if you want to see more videos. I do a new video, post it every Friday, and most of the videos are just like this, step by step. And it's fun. So if you like painting, then you can check that out. You can hit my name, Emily Powers Art, or my picture with a cat painting and go there to see what other videos I have. I'm trying to like keep the canvas from moving around with my hand. And after I do this layer, I was going to show I the schedule for this month, since we finished last month. I showed it in the last video, but... If any of the video skipped a little bit there, it's because my dog just started barking a lot. She barks at weird stuff sometimes, but... I had to like cut that part out if it's good. So sorry about that. So I'm just um, trying to cover this. I want, I'm going to put it a little more brown on this side, but I also want it to be. Um, Like, I, uh, what am I trying to say here? I want to be able to see where I have this knot hole thing. So even if I'm doing it more brown, I might put a little bit blue of blue on the edge just so I can see where the hole there is. And if some blue kind of spits out, where I wasn't expecting it to, or some brown spits out where I'm not expecting it to, it's okay because these are just kind of the colors that'll be in the tree anyway. And when you're painting, you don't have to have it to be an exact color. It can be a little bit different. I mean, unless you're trying to do it super realistic or something, you might want to do it as close to the color as you can, but otherwise, if it's a little bit of a different color, it, it should be fine, you know, as long as it looks like whatever you're trying to make it look like, it should still be okay. So, 
All right, now for this hole, I'm gonna take half and half. I want it as dark as I can get it. So you can get a pretty dark color mixing these as long as you don't have any lighter colors on your brush. You may have to go back in this hole several times before it will look dark enough. But just kind of filling it in. Getting a little bit under that nest there. All right. Now I'm going to get the burnt umber and I might actually pull out some burnt sienna later for the nest. That's why the colors are in the description so that if I pull out something that I didn't originally have planned to use then you won't miss anything. I'm just going to fill this whole thing in. I'll put a little bit of dark in that hole. So you can kind of see where I meant for it to be. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush out from that. So it looks really dark right now. Not doesn't really look like anything, but we kind of made it to where we can see where we want to put our other things. So I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer. If you use a hair dryer, put it on the cool setting and keep it like eight inches away or so so that it, it'll dry right. And I will cut back in once it's dry. All right, so now um, I can move on to the next step. And I'm going to spray my paint with water real quick, this little spray bottle, and it'll keep it wet. And I'm going to get this 3 8 inch Lunar Blender um, to do some texture on the trees. I'm going to get some more brown quick, get out. more burnt umber. Alright, so I'm just going to my brush a little bit, tap most of it off so it's just damp a little bit. And I'm going to get the ultramarine blue again in burnt umber. And remember this side I'm doing more blue. So make, make it more blue on that side. Alright, so now I'm going to get a little bit of titanium white to lighten it. Actually, lightened quite a bit there. I think I really wanted it that bright. I don't, I don't know. Might it be okay? Alright. So I just want a little bit lighter color. And I'm going to scrub this on. So you may not see a whole lot of a difference at first, but just take some paint and scrub it. Let it kind of, let the textures kind of come off. Let it catch. And leave some of the dark showing so that It'll look like the cracks in the wood, dark areas of the wood. And you could actually use a palette knife or something for this. That would be really cool. Um, and it wouldn't have the same look, but it would look pretty neat. It would fall in areas you weren't expecting it to. and you know, do stuff that you didn't, maybe didn't really mean for it to do, but it'll still look 
textured and that would be cool too. I kind of thought I might use a palette knife, but I decided to show with the brush instead. And this is kind of, I'm using this brush the same way we did in the last video, the rock formation video with the beach. I did this like scrubbing on the rocks. So this is just kind of, I thought it'd be cool to show how you can, you know, use the same techniques and the same brushes and do different things. So like last time we did rocks, this time we're doing a tree, but yet it still looks like what we're trying to do. I'm just going to go, keep going with this, this is like a, a dark color but we're kind of laying in what we want in here. And don't do like stripes, kind of make it connect in certain parts and you don't want it to look stripey or anything. So I'm going right up to the edge where the it's coming around there. And let's see how am I gonna define that? I'm gonna keep going. But I'm using this same color because it's the darker color. So I want it to be darker right around there. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit lighter the color, a little bit of a lighter gray, and kind of put some of that already in some of this area over here, and then I can kind of see where I want the darker and the lighter to go. So here's some lighter bark. And you don't have to like completely cover over what we just did. That's why you put it down so that if any of it shows through, it'll show that there is a little bit of a lighter color under it. You can kind of be messy with it because the texture will kind of look like a tree and it's really cool how this works. All right, so I'm not gonna go too close because I want the rim of where it kind of curves um, in and back out to be darker. So I'm gonna get this dark again. And I'm gonna kind of drop um, drop it down at this point kind of like and kind of pull down some and some of the lighter is kind of coming off it's okay I'm gonna get a little bit of water tap that off so it'll go on better. And I can kind of continue. I'm going to pull down in certain areas along here. Because the, the bark, instead of stripes, at this point it kind of turns into like... It's almost like out here it's more like stripey. I mean, not stripes, but like long strokes and here it's like more like a giraffe pattern like squares and shapes with just little lines in between them I'm gonna get some more of the blue and the brown just because it's kind of getting pretty light and I kind of mute it back to a darker color And I'm 
go do more like a spotty kind of pattern all the way around this trunk. Leave some space for the dark to show. It's really fun when you can just kind of do texture. You really don't have to worry a whole lot about what you're doing. Just kind of scrub it in. I mean, I'm kind of, I am trying to um, get it to look as good as I can, you know, because it's like it's on a video. But if you were just doing this for yourself, if it came out bad, well then, you know, that whatever you did, you didn't like. But you can just play with it and have fun. You don't have to like paint it trying as hard as you can to not mess up and do as good as you can. I mean, you can just kind of let it do what it wants to do. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to like make it as good as I can so that it'll look as good as it will be, you know, for the video. But, you know, if I didn't have to do the video, you know, I could just play and have fun. I, I mean, I try to make, when I paint, I try to make it look good because I want to be able to, you know, enjoy it. I want to like be happy with it when I'm done. But sometimes it's fun to just do a painting where you don't worry about what it comes out looking like. You just just have fun doing it. And that can be fun too. Just kind of not worrying how it comes out. Alright, so we've almost got the whole canvas with this texture. And we're not done yet. It's still kind of in the dark. You know, not a lot happening yet. But we'll get a little bit more later. So, now I'm going to get a little bit more brown. Like I said, I'm going to do more brown in certain spots. I need to do this side more of a brown. And I can kind of scribble in some brown here and there from what I just did. Even on this side, I can put a little bit of brown so that it's not like one side looks one way and the other side looks the other way. I can put a little bit of brown, but it's going to be more blue on that side. Now I'm going back to like longer sorry about that smacking my dog is drinking water and is not being very quiet <laughs> quiet about it smacking like that come here what you doing what you doing I'm that thirsty <laughs> and I mean it'll take quite a bit of time to put this texture on but you know like I said it's really fun to just kind of scribble and sometimes you may even once you're done 
you know, want to just keep playing with it. Some people might want to just keep on scrubbing even though they already like how it looks. <laughs> I tend to get tired out though after like two hours of painting, sometimes less. It's like, okay, I need to stop now. But it's good to kind of like, you know, stop sitting for a little bit, at least, even if you're going to go back to it. It's kind of. Get out of your chair and stretch and exercise a little bit. So I'm putting some of this brown, like I said. A little bit of brown in here. And I'll take some of that blue, bluish color, and I'll put a little bit of that in here too. So that have some blue on the side. Alrighty. So that's going to be our first layer of tree. Now I'm going to kind of work on this whole area it's a little bit more detailed and I'm going to get more of this ultramarine blue so I ran out and I'll zoom in I'll tell you the colors I'm mixing but I want to zoom in so that you can see this area real good so I'm doing the same dark color I'm doing like about half of the ultramarine blue and half of the burnt umber and if it's a little more than the other, it's not going to be a big deal, but you don't have to worry that much about it. Just kind of get it, you know, a dark color. And I'm going to just use this brush to just pull that in. I definitely can see that I added more blue to that. So I'll just add a little bit more brown. I could keep it blue if I wanted, but... Brown. All right. And this hole does have some stuff happening in here. Um, we're going to take a little bit more burnt umber with it. So now it's more of the brown. And I'm just going to kind of scrub some of that in. There's some stuff happening back in the hole. You could leave it solid because it would be easier. Probably would be easier than putting any detail, but. I'll put it in a little bit. Now I'm getting a little bit of white with it. It's like a brownish, light brownish color. I'm going to get just a little bit more white. Now I'll go back to the dark color and just kind of Some of that. I'll probably do another coat of dark in there, but I'm just lifting it up so I can see it. There's like a shine that is in my view where I am. All right, and I'll get the brown, the burnt umber by itself, and do this nest in here. All right. I'll take a little bit of that dark we were using for the hole there. And I'm going to put a little bit in here. 
and a little bit under nest in that area. Give it a little bit of different color in there. All right. So not everything, it's still very dark, like I said, but there is a little bit more dimension in here. Go ahead and zoom back out. So I'm just rinsing that brush off. And so this area is what's the most wet, but really most of this is dry except for just a few spots. So I think I can keep going. I'm using the same brush and I'm going to do a little bit um, a little bit lighter color. I'll take this gray brown mixture here and scrub some of that. So it's this is going to brighten it up quite a bit. I'm just going to go along where he went and lighten it up. And if some of it still shows through, that's kind of a good thing because then you can see some of those other colors and stuff we put back under there. So you can see just a little bit, something like that blue that I put. It's kind of neat. And once I get to this outer edge, I want to be careful because I almost just kind of kept going there. Um, you want to leave an area around the knot hole dark so that it'll kind of look like like it's it should be kind of going up, down, and back up. So that's kind of, if you can kind of see by my hands there, it's like this part should be kind of, you know, just kind of like a flat, and then it'll dip in and then go back out. So you want this like area around here to have like a dip look. All right, so I'm going to get this dark that I used for the hole. I'm just going to kind of mute a little bit of Stuff. Actually, kind of making it lighter, picking up stuff. All right, I'm gonna take the red umber and ultramarine blue, make that dark again. And it's got more brown in it. This mixture does. Not really on purpose. Just it could be half and half or whatever you want. Since I kind of went a little too far there, I'm going to kind of dull that back down. That's pretty good. That diary needs that. Alright, so I'm going to take this lighter color now. And I'm going to start right in here. Remember in here it's a little more... I did it a little more patchy. All right, so right in here, I'm gonna kind of dull it down. So I'm gonna get a little darker and let's try not to 
get it too light or I don't want it to get light. And do the same over here a little bit. Just grab a little bit of the middle color in. But I'm still leaving like kind of a dark area. Alright. I'm gonna keep going with this light color now and just put this where the lighter color is. far with that light color. And right in here it's going to be a little darker. But in, actually in this area up here it's kind of light. Not really a whole lot of dark patch right there, but in here I'm going to keep it kind of dark. If you do, alright, so it's looking kind of cool now. I'm getting a lighter color then. Right now I'm going to get that like middle color that we kind of used in here to lighten it, but still make it a little bit darker. Get that light. Just kind of in that area, it's going to be a little bit darker. Okay. And, whoops, string from my rag there. So I'm going to get that dark color again. And just kind of in like the in between areas where we had that first coat. I'm going to put some dark. You don't have to do this if you like it, but alright. Okay, so I'm rinsing that out. And I'm going to get that dark color again, put a little bit more in that hole. And I'm not going to do anything else interesting since I already kind of put a little bit of lighter last time. I'll just kind of around in there. Alright. Okay. So, for the moment I'm going to work in this nest area again, so I'll... It looks really cool on camera. Um, do this nest part. So, you could use this brush, um, I guess, um, or like a angle brush or a round. 
But I'm going to use um, a Filbert Grainier, so it's got like these, I don't know if you can see that, but like some hair texture, there's like some areas missing, so that it should give kind of like some straw type look. But if this brush, if you don't like using this brush, you can use some other brushes that would probably give similar looks. But um, I may not even like using this one, so we'll see. You have to thin the paint out a lot when you're using these brushes. So I'm going to get burnt umber and a little bit of white. I don't want it to be too light yet. And I'm going to water it down some so that it will run off the brush. And I'm just going to kind of see. I'm going to see any more water. I'm just going to do it in kind of the direction of the mist would go, but if it's a little bit funky, it's okay because there's some twigs that are kind of going in weird funky directions, so it'll look just fine. cadmium yellow medium just to see what happens I may not like it might turn it to like a weird yellow color but we'll see so now it's a little more yellow get a little bit more white with it and water it down wipe most of it off so it's not like caked up Watering it down a little bit more. Just don't water it down too much or else it might be too watery and not go where I kind of have to do the right amount of water to paint. Okay, now I'm going to get the burnt umber mostly. It's, I still have a little bit of that other color in the brush so it's lightening it up and Changing it just slightly, but I'm going to add some water to it and kind of add some of that. I'm going to get a little bit of the ultramarine blue just to turn it a little bit like that gray. And I think it looks pretty good. Like a nest there and you can do take the lighter color again and you can do some like little areas that are kind of coming off and you know, kind of make it not perfect by kind of Making the edge come out a little different and doing a little bit more white. This will be like the final light color. Water it down. Get a little bit of and 
put some in some different directions just to kind of not, like I said, not make it look so perfect. There we go. And later we can like glaze some color and kind of change it, make certain areas darker or lighter. Change it up a little bit. All right. So now zoom back out again it's funny how the the colors seem to be different on the camera a little bit than on on here but it's because no camera is as good as our eyes so we just can't get a camera to do exactly what our eyes will do all right so i'm going to do like these twit uh, around the tree and it will have some like foliage on it. You could even put flowers just to kind of add some more color. But first I'm going to get the brown with that gray color. And I'm using a round brush. So that's the size. Um, rounds, different brands have different sizes so I don't always know how to say round, what size round, but compared to my finger, I guess. Because everyone's finger is a different size too, so. <laughs> like in different brands, a number four, this is a number four in this, but number four in your brand might be way bigger or way smaller, so it's just, I don't really ever know how to say it. So I'm gonna, Take a little bit of white so you can see it and get some brown. I'm going to make these vines a little more brown. Certain areas anyway. And then I'm going to pull it down. Just give me one there. You can add some water so that it'll kind of flow better. Like one that's kind of coming down, coming down. You can kind of change these too, so I'm not doing exactly what the vines in the picture are doing. I'm doing it a little bit different. This one right here. I'm gonna get this gray color here and put back any cover over that branch some. All right, and so now it's still a little dark, so I'm gonna get some of this gray that we used and add a little bit of brown to make it a little different than the tree not to stand out and if it's like kind of catching the texture that can kind of look neat. Just let it kind of catch. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little touch of this phthalo green to it. And there are little Make these smaller little vines that are coming off of the bigger vines. And it 
will kind of be what the foliage is coming off of. Alright, so now we need some color on here. So I'm going to take this round, and you can use like a angle brush or something to do that what I'm using the round for, but I'm going to take some of the phthalo green and a little bit of the phthalo blue, and I'll turn it a little like teal, turquoise, and I'm going to get some burnt umber. Just going to like dull it a little bit. And I get a little bit of the cadmium yellow medium. It's like this dark yellow green. And I'll just kind of tap and get some foliage on Let's see I need some of this line to come out here. I need a little bit more color. All right. I need to get that green. And you can have fun with this. Like this is the fun part where you get to add color and Really, I'm probably going to put way more foliage than in the picture. So you could do less, you could do more, just whatever you want to do. I'm just going to tap along the vines. so cool how just a few taps can really look like leaves. But we're still going to see the tree trunk through, so that's why we wanted to make sure we got that detail in there. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this, but I think I decided I will. I think I want to put flowers um, with the green, and then I'll just like give it more color. I think it'll look pretty. I was not sure if I wanted to do it or not, but now that I'm seeing it, I think I want to do it. So now we're going to get some more of the cadmium yellow medium. And it'll be a little bit more yellowy, a little bit lighter. Add a little bit of white so that it'll cover. And this will be lighter. Don't cover up all your dark, but you do want to have some of this lighter color on there. I mean, look at this side compared. This is a lot brighter. And So it's like this painting is just really fun with the scrubbing and the tapping and it's like certain pa paintings are just 
I don't know, just painting in general is fun, but certain paintings are just more fun than others. And certain people like certain things better, and but there, I might should put something else over here, maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. Put a little bit of a vine here. And I'll add this like greenish color in here. So I can add a little bit of green. So I'm gonna put some dark first and then add a light. Since it's still wet, it's going to mix with a lot of that dark color. Alright, and I'm going to just do a few leaves and with a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white. And these leaves will just be like the really bright ones that aren't going to do as many. Have a few here and there. Brighten it up some. All right. All right. So I'm gonna rinse that out now. So this is this is looking really cool. So we're gonna have some a pop of color with the egg and then some flowers if I decide to do those. So I'm going to go ahead and do the um, egg. I'm going to take the phthalo blue and some phthalo green. It's going to be mostly blue, but I want it to be like a teal color, like a blue-green. I think it's a robin's egg, so they're like kind of blue-green colored. And you can really make this any color you want, but the color will kind of change the kind of egg it is. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to take a little bit more white. the top. So you want the top to be lighter. I'm going to take a little bit more of the phthalo blue to this and it'll take a just a tiny bit of burnt umber to dull it a little bit and kind of tap the bottom with like a darker And there are some like little, you could do more um, eggs if you wanted to. I may even decide to do that. Well, I don't know, why not? We'll do more eggs. Take dark, we'll do two more so you won't be so lonely. the same size. And I'll 
take a little bit more of a darker color, adding a little bit more of that blue, and I'll just put some blue in there to get that lighter color and put it on top. needs to be a little bit lighter at the top there. All right, they don't have to be perfect, just kind of a few. I think I like that better than just the one. All right, so see, as you're painting, the painting can kind of change what you were originally thinking, because originally I thought I was just gonna have the one. I wasn't sure if I was gonna put flowers or not. So as you go, you can kind of determine those things because you start realizing what you want to change. Alright, so I'm going to get the Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue again, that same dark color. I'm going to add a lot of water to it. Thin it out. Sorry if it's off camera. It's just the same color you've been mixing. And I'm going to add some dark under here so it's just really washed out. Really uh, watery color. I'm just going to kind of add some of that to kind of darken up some of these areas. Like right under here, I needed to be a little darker. And I'm going to do the same thing with Ultramarine Blue. Take some and water it down real good. And I'm going to put a little bit of like a blue tint. Some of these. I could have done this before. I should have done it before. It is Death of Foliage. But putting some on the tree. I give it a blue color in certain spots. It's like a little bit of like a blue a little bit of blue under here. So you can see it's just like changing the color just by kind of doing a thin layer. That right there just changed it. And I'm going to do something similar with the green. So I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo green. I'm like running out of room here, but I'm going to water it down. Put some green over here because it's like the green is reflecting onto the tree. And there's some moss or something there. You could actually do that, scrub in some like green for moss if you wanted to. All right, and now I think I'm going to take some deep magenta, some pink, to put some over here to the side. Um, I'm gonna actually pause the video and scrape all this up so I have more room to actually show you the palette. All right, so I just kind of cleaned that up there. And now I'm taking, let's see if I can put this over here so that you can see it, deep magenta. So you can do any color you want if you want to do flowers, and really you don't have to do flowers, but I'm going to do some. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit of white so that it'll cover a little bit better. And just do a few spots of... Color. Okay, you 
could do however much you want, more or less, whatever. You, like I said, you don't even have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to add a little bit of white and do some of that. Add just a little bit. We're doing the same thing we do with the leaves, starting dark and just adding a little bit of white. Okay, and then I'll add a lot of white. I'll just kind of dab that onto what we just did. All right. So, um, you could change the color simply by adding, you know, like a little yellow. Change it to a different kind of pink, peach color. You could do blue flowers or, you know, just kind of... You could do yellow flowers if you wanted to. Yellow would be kind of cool. But, here we go. So, let's rinse my brush out there. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can see my other videos, the tutorials. I hope you try this. It was really fun. Um, doing all the scrubbing and the dabbing and it's just it's really it's really fun neat painting so I hope you try it and I actually was going to show earlier the schedule but I forgot so I'm showing it now <laughs> um, last month in August we did these so um, there I've, I've done all of these pictures I've painted them they're on on YouTube. So if you go to my channel and you want to see what those look like, you can go there and check those out. Um, this is the one I was talking about with the rocks. You, we scrubbed like we did with the tree here. Um, we did scrubbing on the rocks. Um, very similar. That brush. So it's kind of cool how we did it the same technique. And this is September. So it's exciting. We just did that one, and so next week's the tiger, so if you want to see that painting come to life, you can, uh, like I said, go to my channel. If it's been a week since this one's been out, that one should already be there, so. And then you have the girl riding the horse and the waterfall, so that should be fun. And so, like I said, I hope that you enjoyed it and try it, paint it for yourself. And thanks for watching. Bye.